Yeah. This Video. is Rory. Hi, Rory. Hi. <laughs> this is the um, making of pumpkin soup. Yes, out of a, like, look at that, pumpkin. An actual effing pumpkin. Rory is a fellow Steve's my host, and which makes him, like, amazing, even though he's amazing without being my host. And he is a fellow Alahashi Yatsu student. Uh, hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is from, he's Irish by birth. Are you Scottish by passport, or do you just live in Scotland? Um, I'm a dual passport holder, so I'm Irish and uh, Scottish. Oh, your dual citizenship. Look at you with your fancy self. <laughs> <laughs> it means that if I go to certain countries, that uh, like depending on what, what their immigration status is, if I'm Irish, then it's better. If I'm UK, it's better for certain countries. So, like depending on what Middle Eastern countries, it can be a little bit. A better traveler than we Americans, since we had that, you know, that one president dude that decided to go to war with half of them. <laughs> This guy's that other uh, guy that wasn't too bright. <laughs> exactly, that squinty guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's some massive, awesome, great jokes today um, with this Steve Brill and such thing. But, oh, but, no, he, was, he didn't fit Obama in, but he fit in Clinton. In oh, nice. Well, like, yeah. I love Clinton. Clinton came to um, my dad's town, or my dad's city. They're like to Derry, like whenever there's the peace process and everything in Northern Ireland. When when they were trying to broker it, actually, he, he came there. Or he was like him and Hillary Clinton were there, and they were like, it's a big, big, big day. Yeah. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. I like when I put this up, you turn your head. <laughs> <laughs> special uh, special camera technique that's uh, used like to distract the audience from <laughs> the pumpkin. <laughs> And this is not going to be a ghoul. He's actually making a soup. This is going to be a pumpkin and green bean soup, I think. Pumpkin and green bean. With possibly with a, a cayenne pepper um, some spiciness to it. Yeah. You impressed me. See, Rory knows how to cook, which is amazing. He is. Look at me. Look at this. I've never actually seen anybody cutting into raw food before in my life. Well, I mean, I have, but not. Not a pumpkin. <laughs> In the wild, the machete carriers. So, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at your machete. <laughs> I was talking to Delma with a machete earlier today. Like. I can imagine. Yeah, Rory yeah. went to a park for a natural food scavenging, foraging. I guess mm. it would be foraging. It was wild food. Um, an enthusiast called what, Mr. Wildman, uh, Steve Brill. So I, was, I got to meet the wild man in person. It's quite an honor. <laughs> I felt very, very humbled. <laughs> and I also picked uh, ginkgo bilboa uh, uh, pods today as well from memory. So they're really cool. I'm going to pick more, actually. Out of Prospect, Prospect Park in Brooklyn? Um, you can pick them there, but this was in Central Park where I picked them. Ah, earlier. very cool. And how many people were on your tour? Mm, I think there was probably... 12 or 15, I think, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, and different nationalities and stuff as well. Yeah. Oh, there was another multicultural... Mm -hmm. Yeah, some Irish Tyners and stuff like that. Oh, that is so cool. Were they coming out specifically for the tour? Some, yeah. One, one lady came all the way from upstate New York. She came, like, traveled from, you know, three or four hours from here. Yeah, just specifically for the tour. That's yeah. cool. Was mm -hmm. that the Chinese lady? Uh, no, no. Uh, who was it? Um, her name was April. She's an expert as well on wild food. So. That's cool. That is one amazing thing that I'm noticing in New York is that, um, I'm saying this for the camera, we've actually discussed this. But All right. <laughs> the, uh, this is for your benefit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> but um, <laughs> all the growing awareness of organic food and whole food and just healthy, eating healthy, not eating like that McDonald's crap. Even though, honestly, the most popular restaurant I have seen here is McDonald's. Every time I walk by one, it's packed. But that's America for you, though. You only have to walk, like, 250 meters or so, and you'll get McDonald's. A drive through or just a regular McDonald's, like... Yes. And it is amazing, too, because actually the McDonald's over in Ireland don't taste anything like the McDonald's over here. Mm, 
they don't really taste of anything in Ireland, like the McDonald's. It tastes like duty. <laughs> <laughs> I had one once, but I regretted it immediately afterwards, especially because I was just, I, I only ate there because I was starving, mm -hmm. and I didn't know where anything was because I was in uh, City Square waiting for a friend of mine, and he, like, slept in or something. And where were you? In Dublin? Or yeah, City Square in Dublin. So I'm just walking around not knowing what to do. I'm like, oh, great. I just landed in another country. <laughs> and I have no idea. I have no way to call my friend, and I have I don't know what to do. Even the homeless people don't eat McDonald's in Ireland, like, I, I, can see, I can see yeah. why. <laughs> yeah, I went and I got a burger, and I immediately regretted it. It tasted like... Mystery it, meat. Yes, it was gray. Like, the meat was gray. And I'm like, oh, my God. But I'm like, well, I need food, so I ate it. And then I literally walked past a farmer's market, like, five minutes later. And I was like, really? <laughs> I could have eaten an apple. <laughs> I would have some, I see, I have some pretty good um, farmer's markets, like, um, I don't know about Dublin, because it's been a while since I've been there, but in Cork and the southwest, there's a really, really good market there, like, where you can just go around and you can taste everything, like, all the cheeses that are made, like, like, a week before, mm. you know, they're coming straight from the dairies and stuff there. Homemade cheese. Oh, here's a question for you. And I ask everybody this. If you had to give up one or the other, you only you can only choose one. Mm -hmm. Would you choose between cheese or oral sex? If I had to give up between cheese or oral sex, mm -hmm. I would give up um, cheese. Wow. This is becoming an epidemic. <laughs> I could give up cheese easily, but like, because <laughs> I like cheese a lot, but at the same time, no, I would give up cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually had people agonize over that decision for months. Until, really? Yeah. That's a gallbladder thing, man, for sure. Is that a gallbladder have, like, thing? Decisions, like being able to make a decision fast without any moment of hesitation, you know, being able to go straight for what it is sure. that you, you want. Yeah, but true, but that's, you know, it can be a hard choice. Because I honestly, I pick cheese. Really? Yeah, I pick cheese. Okay. Because I'm just like, you know what, I can go out and get cheese whenever I want. <laughs> You can get cheese. I mean, cheese does make the world go around in some level. <laughs> <laughs> I think oral sex does more, though. <laughs> well, it, it stops wars, maybe. Oh, yeah, Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, some, like, it, it induces apathy. <laughs> oral sex induces apathy? Perhaps. In, in Bill Clinton, maybe, yeah. Oh. How so? Now I'm, now I'm, I'm interested. You're confused. No, I'm interested. How could how, how is Bill Clinton apathetic? Um, I don't think he's apathetic. I don't think he's the, the the most apathetic president, but he had his moments of apathy. Oh well, so, yeah, that's everybody. Yeah. Everyone's gonna be an asshole. They all gotta take a turn. Obama's gonna get some shit when he becomes an asshole because he has that peace prize and all. He won the Nobel Peace Prize recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mm, I was rooting for my, my friend. <laughs> oh, your friend was up for it? Yeah, he, he actually he tried, did apply, apply for it, but he didn't get, get, get nominated. You can apply for it? You can apply for it, yeah. You can, you can apply for anything these days if you have enough, you know, um, ambition and, you know, um, you know, if you're open enough. Like, yeah, he applied for it, but he how didn't is, get it. Like, how is he peaceful? How is he peaceful? He's, he probably, his approach would be more like, Supplying everybody with marijuana. <laughs> rather than like Bill Clinton, he would make sure that they didn't inhale it or anything like you know. 